Hello, hi, hey, you, yeah you, you look gorgeous today. Welcome to the video. Building an audience through content is one thing, but connecting with them is another. And what is one way that people try connecting with their audience and lets them know that they're not a robot? Well, vlogging. And today, because I feel like there is a area for what is the best vlogging setup or some of the best vlogging setups, I wanted to make a video about it. That's right, we're making a video on what are the best vlogging setups. So I'm gonna start with an introductory, a middle ground, and then what I think is the best setup you should get for ease of use and also cost efficiency. Now, as I go through this video, I'm gonna be talking about a lot of different pieces and technology. In case you guys wanna know more about anything that I should talk about in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to do an in-depth review, but let me know that you actually want one, so I will go ahead and make one for you. And without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what is the best vlogging setup to start out with. And a lot of you probably guessed it, but that's right. It is your phone. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds kind of weird recommending a phone or like a cop-out, but to be completely honest, this thing records amazing 4K footage. And it's so good to the point that honestly, if I mix it in with some of the actual like footage from a regular camera, most people won't be able to tell the difference. Now the microphones on this are actually pretty decent when you're considering if you're gonna be vlogging, vlogging a lot outside, but there are gonna be a couple ways to fix that and I will show you afterwards what attachments I recommend for it. But another big thing about this is that it is much easier to talk to your camera like this or even like this instead of talking to this big old camera. I can tell you right now that going out in public and vlogging on this thing right here is still awkward. I was just going through an airport and I still felt like I was getting looks from all over the place whenever I was sitting there talking to my camera and vlogging. I don't know why people are weirded out about cameras, but they are. <laughs> I'm weirded out about doing it in public. But in all seriousness, this really is a great way to get started and also kind of test the waters to figure out is vlogging for you. Now, wouldn't it suck if you invested a few thousand dollars into a new vlogging setup and then you didn't end up using it for vlogging? Might be a waste of money. So biggest recommendation is try this out. Now, if you want to go and upgrade a couple pieces for this, if you want to get like better audio, what I recommend is a shotgun mic. Rode actually has a mic very similar to this where it's just going to be a lightning that goes right into it and hangs off of it. So you can go ahead and just talk right into it that way. They also have some for Android, I do believe as well. And then on top of that, you can also do a wireless lab mic. So Rode makes a wireless lab mic for a single individual. And then DJI makes a phenomenal wireless lab mic that also has a two person transmitter in case you have yourself and then someone else you wanna mic up. These are a great way to increase your audio and help you out with that. Also, I'm gonna add on to this. This is the cheapest setup you can get because it's what you already have. So use your phone, it makes phenomenal videos. Even if it's Android, Please, for the love of everything that's good in this world, do not even start the Android versus iPhone debate. They're both great phones nowadays. Just use the one that you want. But either way, use what you have. It's gonna save you a lot of money and get you used to vlogging in public. Now, onto what I think is probably the best entry-level camera for you to start out with. In case you do wanna get a camera and you're at the point where you do wanna invest in one, this is what I, would, what I would recommend. So for the actual camera body, I would recommend the Sony ZV-E10. Now, the body of it is gonna be very similar to this Sony 6100. Big difference is that this screen flips out versus flipping up. Honestly, I have no idea why Sony did that because whenever you attach the microphone, it's kind of hard to see yourself, not gonna lie. But I'm glad Sony learned their lesson. They finally started making flip out screens. So thank you, Sony, for doing that. I appreciate you. But regardless, this is probably one of the best ones. It's very small, it's lightweight. It also has a great lens options as well, which we'll talk about that in a second. But on top of that, it's less than a thousand dollars for the actual camera and for the lens. Now it comes with a kit lens, which is a 16 to 50, I believe, which is a phenomenal uh, lens to start out with when vlogging. If you want something that's gonna be better at low light, then I would say the 16 millimeter would be fantastic. Now 16, uh, just to give you an idea of what it looks like, as far as what how wide it looks, looks like this. And that is plenty good enough to be able to vlog from. So you don't really need to go too much wider than that, but this is a phenomenal lens to pair with it in case you do want a better low light performance and that beautiful buttery smooth bokeh that everybody loves. Ready? Let's just take a moment to appreciate bokeh. Oh, look at this. Look at this blurry background back here. So beautiful. Love it. Now, Couple other things you might want for that are gonna be a microphone. So again, very similar to before, I would recommend a shotgun microphone. Rode actually has a shotgun microphone that is called, I believe the Rode Video Mic 2, which is gonna be very similar to this design itself, but it's gonna be a much shorter version. Honestly, the sound quality on that is phenomenal and I would highly, highly, highly recommend it, especially when you're not in a small room like this because I'm not gonna dive into that. It's a great microphone, I would strongly suggest it. 
but it sounds fantastic and it's very similar to this one as far as like how it looks and the design of it. So they did a great job with it. Now again, on top of that, if you wanna go with the wireless lav mic option, I'd either recommend the Rode lav or I would actually recommend the DJI. Personally, I'm gonna go with the DJI because it has two transmitters, has a lot of other features with it, but either one of those would be amazing to pair with it and will help you with your audio. And then at the end of this too, I'm actually gonna talk about the next camera that we have up on our list for the best vlogging camera. And then I'll tell you about a couple accessories that I would still recommend with any one of these cameras or any one of these setups that will still help you out a lot. So let's talk about what is actually the best of the best, the cream of the crop, the best that you could buy. Well, it's none other than the Sony a7 IV. That's right. Me personally, I feel like the Sony a7 IV is the perfect vlogging camera. Reason being is that it has so many mode dials and functions to be able to be quick on its feet, to be able to capture whatever moment you need. So if you need to be able to capture a photo, if you need to be able to capture some B-roll, they have quick mode dials on top to be able to make it very easy and flexible. Let's not also talk about the fact that this has a beautiful flip out screen. It can do 60 frames a second in 4K with a very slight crop on it as well. You have active in-body stabilization, which is fantastic, which helps you outside. We have to worry about carrying around a gimbal with you the entire time, stabilize your footage. This thing is just a beast of a camera. Now to pair with that, I would actually go with the Tamron 17 to 28. And hear me out. The 17 to 28 from Tamron is a beautiful lens with a 2.8 aperture. It also gives you a very small lightweight body. The actual lens is self-contained, so even if you're at 17 or 28, it's still in that same small form factor, which we love. Because again, even vlogging on this guy is super awkward. Now, this is gonna be a little bit different. What I would recommend for a microphone is gonna be the Sony EBM-C1, I don't, I don't know. The name's gonna go somewhere here on the screen. But this microphone is phenomenal. It's electronic, which means you don't have to have any wires at all. So it makes your setup even more lightweight and less annoying to deal with. It also gives you the ability to have a front facing shotgun style. It also does all around modes in case you wanna pick up the surrounding area noise, or if you're behind the camera, it actually has a microphone in the back that you can speak into, which is awesome. You also have some built in automatic leveling, which is nice. So that way if you get really, really loud, you're not actually gonna peek on your microphone, which happens with some of the other ones when you don't level it out properly. So this is a super easy and super simple microphone to use and it's absolutely amazing. I loved using it personally whenever I went to Disney World. Well, I didn't go to Disney World. I went to Disney Springs, but you know, got my Disney fix. I went to Disney Springs with this thing and I vlogged with it and it was just fantastic. Now, two other cameras I'm gonna quickly mention. I'm not gonna dive too deep into those as to why I would recommend them, but to basically have a step down from the a7 IV, the a7C is a fantastic camera and it's a little bit cheaper than the a7 IV. It's also smaller, which makes it again, just easier, more portable to vlog with. So that is a huge plus with it. And the thing is a full frame sensor still. So you still have beautiful, amazing quality from it. And now a step up from that that you might hear is the a7S III. But the reason why I picked the a7 IV over the a7S III is that the a7S III is a thousand dollars more I also don't really think that as a vlogger, you're gonna need the features that that comes with as far as like the 120 frames per second. I mean, I think 60 is good for most options unless you do like high speed stuff, I guess. Like maybe if it was like racing or things like that, you might want that 160, 120 frames per second. But for most people, I feel like the a7 IV is gonna be more than enough. Oh, and also one other thing with the a7S III is like, uh, what is it, shutter, like the wobble. Uh, rolling shutter, I think it's called, or the wobble that it does. But even then, like most people aren't gonna notice that stuff. But anyways, I'm gonna pull back. Those are some other options you wanna look into, but a7 IV, Tamron 17 28 is my favorite choice to have with the electronic microphone. Now I know I talked about it before, but again, if you wanna use a wireless lav microphone with it, I recommend either the Rode or the DJI. Depending on which one you wanna go and spend your money on, if you get just the Rode, the single version, I believe it's around like $200. And then the DJI with the two transmitters that's all in that little like capsule is probably like 330, I believe, which honestly I think is worth the money personally. Plus all the other features it gives you. Now, a couple things you're gonna want for each one of these cameras are gonna be the following accessories. Number one, for a grip to help you kind of hold it out a little bit further, or if you need to put that camera down, I'm gonna recommend the Joby HandyPod. Now, the reason why I'd say the Joby HandyPod is because it is lightweight, it's very small, and also has a ball head on it, so it's easy to do vertical content in case you need to do some vertical content. It's also just a standard thread mount on top, so you can easily just screw it on or screw it off if need be. And when you're not using this, it easily fits into a pocket on your bag. You can probably throw it in your purse if you want to, or you can even put it in your back pocket, in your jeans, which I do a lot. So that way, if you are just trying to take photos or B-roll, you don't have this weird thing hanging off of your camera. This thing is awesome, again, and super lightweight to travel with. Now, another thing you're gonna want is called a variable ND filter. 
So basically what this does is, is sunglasses for your camera so that way you can keep your f-stop all the way down. Reason being is that, raise your hand if you guys like bokeh. Everyone loves bokeh, who doesn't? If you don't know what bokeh is, that blurriness you're seeing, is called that's what's called bokeh. So to help you keep that, because you need to keep your f-stop as low as possible to be able to achieve that, is gonna be this. So this actually darkens up the image for you, which the reason why that's super important is because you can actually keep your f-stop down lower. So basically imagine this being sunglasses for your camera. Now technically for your phone, if you wanna be able to use a grip with it or something or like, you know, this handy pod, you are gonna need something like this. It's basically just a phone holder with a standard thread mount on the bottom. I currently have an adapter for it, but either way, this is great for your phone. You just use this, hold this out and it works fantastic. All right, this is the last minute recommendation for the phone stuff. If you guys do end up using the phone quite a bit and you wanna be able to smooth out your footage, I would recommend a stabilizer. I'm gonna show you real fast. So this right here is a stabilizer. It's kind of an older version of it, but basically you put your phone right in here and then you can turn it on. Well, it's not doing anything because it knows there's no phone in there. Hang on, demo time. All right, so you put your phone in like so, hold the button, bam, there you go. Now, if you move it around, it's nice and smooth as you're moving it around, so you're not getting any like weird jerking motion stuff too, but again, if you're enjoying vlogging on your phone, you wanna step up your content, just get one of these. And that is it for the video, that's right. Oh, also to an SD card, but that's kind of like self-explanatory. You're gonna need an SD card for any one of the cameras you get. But that is it for the video. I appreciate you guys stopping through. There are gonna be affiliate links in the description below that I'm gonna have for you guys. So in case you do wanna pick up any of these items yourself, it'll be easy right there. It'll also get me a commission and you were just gonna buy it anyway. So I'd appreciate if you use those links. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you wanna see more content like this or other vlogs and other like how-to videos, then hit that subscribe button on the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And if you wanna come talk to me live about any of the videos you see on my channel, I'm live multiple times a week on Twitch. So please stop by and say hello. I'd love to be able to talk to you. That is it for now. I appreciate y'all. Hope you have an amazing night. And until the next one, have an amazing stream or vlog. Bye.